पार्सन्स स्ट्रक्चरल फंक्शनल अप्रोच विच डोमिनेटेड पार्सन्स फेज टू हैज बीन सिवियरली क्रिटिसाइज नाउ this was partly responsible for parsons making an attempt to account for change but perhaps parsons himself also realized that he had exhausted the creative potential of structural functional approach and therefore he moved on further deviating from structural functionalism so that would bring us to parsons phase 3 so in the later part of 1950s and 60s parsons was looking for new ideas which could help him in building a theory of social change and like always as i said biology was his first love and that continued to provide him the clues so he looked for in, uh, inspiration towards biology and in biology there were exciting developments happening at this time the discovery of hormones that how circulation of hormones in the system biological system regulates and controls the functioning of the system parsons adapted this concept to sociology through the concept of generalized medium of exchange that each sub system of society has a generalized medium of exchange and the circulation of that generalized medium of exchange in the sub system regulates and controls the functioning of the sub system so in the economic system money is that generalized medium in the political system it is power in societal community he said it is influence and in the fiduciary system it is value commitment later on there was another development in biology which finally provided parsons with the clue and that is the idea of cybernetics that cybernetics is about communication and control in living or non living systems so this idea of cybernetics developed in biology whereby the dna which is coded information controls and the development of the entire organism or the body and regulates the functioning of the entire organismic system so parsons adapted this idea also to sociology so he said the subsystems i in energy are controlled by the subsystems 
high in information that information controls energy Now he goes back to his agile schema to account for change in society. This is his agile schema which is presented in the form of a hierarchy. And here are the corresponding subsystems associated with each of these imperatives or functional prerequisites. This is cultural system. This is social system. This is personality system. And this is organismic system. This is his schematic representation that these are the systems associated with each of these activities. Now, he says cultural system is high is high in information but low in energy. While organismic system is high in energy but low in information. Now, he says, as per the principle of cybernetics, the system high in information controls the system high in energy. For example, I can give you an illustration from mechanical appliances, say a washing machine. There are two main parts of the washing machine. One is the rotating drum where laundry is placed. And the other is the control panel, electronic control panel. So, you press the control panel and the drum starts rotating and you press it again at another place it stops rotating. So, operation of the drum is controlled by is controlled by the electronic panel. Now, electric panel the electronic panel has the chip and that is coded information while the rotating drum consists of electrical energy. So, the part high in information controls the part high in energy. 
this is cybernetic principle same way in the case of social action we have the cultural system cultural system is all documented or coded information the values norms etc so the cultural system controls the social system as we have already seen that how culture shapes the pattern of interaction as i explained to you a little while ago today also and i had done that in detail in the earlier class that the cultural system controls the human behavior and that leads to patterns of social interaction and a plurality of patterns of social interaction constitutes the social system so the cultural system controls the social system and when individuals internalize these norms and values in the course of interaction within the social system their personality is shaped so social system controls the personality system and the personality controls the mindless energies of the muscles of the organismic system so that is how the system high in information controls the system high in energy now parson says that this shows that there is interdependence between energy and information in the system in fact the social life consists of the two dimensions energy and information and the two are interdependent where the information controls the energy so if there is a change in the system in the form of the energy flow this would exert pressure on the system for change in the culture in a direction that it leads to control of the energy flow alternately if there is a change in the cultural system that may have consequences in terms of increasing or decreasing the energy flow so the two are interconnected then going back to herbert spencer's idea of evolution parsons tries to explain the process of change structural differentiation structural differentiation leads to adaptational upgrading that means it increases the adaptational capacity of the system but as the system becomes more differentiated it creates need for integration that is how spencer explained evolution if you can recall the earlier lectures that according to spencer evolution is a twin process of differentiation and integration so structural differentiation which leads to adaptational upgrading creates need for integration
Now, this is realized through value generalization. Value generalization. Value generalization leads to greater inclusion. So, if there is more differentiation, this will exert pressure for value generalization. Because value generalization leads to greater inclusion. The value generalization means if we go back to Parsons pattern variables, he is talking about shift from particularism to universalism. So, more universalistic the values, more inclusive the collectivity is. If we tend to be particularistic, that is divisive. So, if people are, you know, defined in terms of the religion they belong to, this creates division in a multi-religious society. But if we become secular and treat everyone as a human being, then this is a case of value generalization and it is more inclusive because all people get included in the collectivity on the basis of a common identity as human beings. In fact, to put it in the lighter vein, if we move on to even more universalistic identity that is life, then it becomes even more inclusive. It includes not only human beings, but also what is Menka Gandhi's constituency. Dogs, cats, monkeys and trees and so on. So, every form of life gets included. So, more universalistic the value, more inclusive it is. So, coming back to it, if there is structural differentiation. Increasing structural differentiation means energy flow increases. That will exert pressure for value generalization. That means that will exert pressure for cultural change. Alternately, if we adopt more universalistic values in the society, that will exert pressure for structural differentiation. So, that is how the entire society gets transformed. So, this is how society evolves. Society evolves either because of greater differentiation which is followed by value generalization or first by value generalization which is followed by greater differentiation. So, that is how there is a process of evolutionary change in society according to Parsons. So, this is how Parsons developed the theoretical logic for explaining change. Then, using this logic, he tried to identify the stages of evolution, the stages through which human societies have passed in the evolutionary process. <laughs>